Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. A lot of time I get requests about how do you become a good programmer? What are the tricks and hacks, especially with respect to JavaScript? So I'm beginning this two part series to you where I'll show you some of the tricks and hacks that I use on a day to day basis or I've seen those are really helpful when you work, uh, especially with Node, Express or any JavaScript uh, application that you're working on. So let's get started. I hope you like the tricks and hacks I'll share. Uh, these are some of the coolest things that I'll share with you. I'm sure you'll love them. At the same time, uh, think of these tricks and hacks, not just for temporary, but try and incorporate them in your day to day um, while working, right? That will lead you to write good minimum and quality code. Uh, I'm sure uh, if you don't use these tricks and hacks, you'll end up writing a lot more lines of code, which is certainly you can avoid it, right? So before we get started, um, Please do, if you like the video, please do like, subscribe, share these tutorials with your friends and colleagues. Thank you in advance. Let's get started. All right, so the very first and cool thing I'm going to show you is how do you filter unique values from an array, right? So I, in my experience, I've seen that there are a lot of times when I get an array and we need to find the unique values out of it. I'm sure you can write index of, uh, you know, the value and then find if it is there or not and then take it into a separate array. A lot of overhead, right? But trust me, there's a simple way in one line you can extract the unique values from any array. That is because of the set object type, which was introduced as part of ES6 along with spread operator. Let me quickly show you that now in action. So I'm going to define an array here and I'm going to call it users. And let's just give some values for now, right? I get a lot of times that I don't use um, girl's name in while defining variables or the values. So I'm going to use some. Um, let's uh, start with some names that we can think of, right? Right? All right, so we got some names. These are the you. Now what will I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some names multiple times just to make sure that we have duplicate values and that's where we will be extracting the unique values. Pretty cool stuff. Let me give it here again. So now you see here I got two names which I'm repeating which is Ram and Lisa, right? So what we are going to do now, so like I said, we'll use um, unique values equal to and now we are going to extract it, right? So like I said, we'll be using an object called set. So for that, you need to use spread operator along with new set. And what is the set about? So it takes a variable here, you can see iteratable. So we'll pass users. And now let's console log this. Unique values. So now the, see in, in just one line, we have extracted the unique values. Now if I open console, <coughs> so you see, we don't see any duplicate values. You see here, so it extracted out of the seven, it, it is giving only five, which are uh, unique values, right? So that's a pretty cool way. So in just one line, you can extract unique values from any array of your choice, right? So this was hack number one. Make sure that you use this next time when you want to extract uh, unique values from any array. All right. Okay. So tip number one. All right. Let's see the next one. Okay. So the next one is every and some methods in array. Now there are so many methods which are available that you can work with arrays, right? And I especially find every and some very helpful um, when, especially when you're iterating on a certain uh, method or certain condition that it has to satisfy or not. So every method will check that whether the conditions are satisfied for each element in the array. Whereas some will check whether some elements satisfy the conditions or not. That's what this means. So let's go ahead and for now, again, let's use the same array. So what I'm going to do, I, let, let's, let's not comment it. Probably we can start building here. And let's say you want to uh, have a condition and I'm going to say tax values equal to some values, let's say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Right. So what I have here is a simple array, nothing crazy. All we are trying to do here is 
run through some array right so we can say check if some of these values are greater than 30 so or 25 or some numbers right um, so basically every means satisfy all conditions so I'm going to say const and let's say here tax equal to and here I'm going to say tax values dot now you can see these are all the array operations that we can do concat fill find index of join keys every sum shift slice sort so these are all array methods that are available so I'm giving you an example of every and sum in this example but go ahead try with sum sort etc all right so I'm saying check whether each element satisfies some condition now this will be nothing but a method okay so for example let's say check I'm going to add a method and call it check tax and what are we going to do here we are going to define that method and we are going to say check tax and what does it take it takes a parameter which is the value of the iterable so here we can say and here we'll say return if or if you can say that you know uh, if um, say value is greater than or equal to greater than or equal to 30 return true so now what happens when you console log the tax it will tell you whether every element satisfies this condition or not let's see that in action all right so here you see it says false uh, the reason it says false is because not every element is greater than or equal to 30 so let's hike the numbers okay so now all of these satisfy this condition so now when you refresh it says true so that is every now same way you can do and check if some values satisfy this condition so what I'm going to do I'm bringing back to the some values which are less than 30 so now this should return true because some values are definitely greater than or less uh, greater than or equal to 30 now if I say less than or equal to 5 now it should say false because none of at least some but none of this iterations are less than or equal to 5 that's why it's false so this is uh, trick number two which is every and some but like I said go ahead give it a try with map filter sort find find index etc it's fun to play with arrays and objects so give it a try you'll enjoy uh, working with them also at the same time it will be a lot of time saver you'll find that a lot of times when you try and write your logic it's already available as a method all right uh, this is uh, simplest but trust me this is one of the most useful one that uh, I come across on a day-to-day -day basis uh, let's see this which is converting to a boolean right so for example let's say you have is true you have a value right now if you log this you would see that its value is zero but if you want to convert it to a boolean just add not and you would see that it is true yes because it's zero so now if I have one and I make it not I get false so a one and a zero can be easily quickly converted into a boolean just by adding an exclamation yet very cool hack because certain times I've seen uh, my team members in fact I used to do that we will most probably be writing if is true right so I'm sure you will relate it to it um, something like this code return true etc if you are someone who use if you still write like this like me sometimes please go ahead and start using the trick which is to add exclamation mark and convert it to a boolean if you like if you are someone who writes if else drop in a comment and let me know all right so the next one uh, conditionally setting a variable now trust me this saves this is like 80 percent times I tell myself I t tell my team members also to use conditional setting a variable extremely useful because uh, when especially when you're working with objects everything you might need that so I'll say conditional statement I'm just putting it here a variable name so that we know it now let's say you got a variable right um, let's say now I'll create an object uh, user nothing fancy I'll just uh, create a name 
just to show you. Okay, so now you would say that if this variable had name, use that, right? If this has a name, use it. Else, default it to empty. Now, this one line saves so much of code because typically people would do something like this. If name, then use this or if this one statement I have to write, I would probably be writing like this. Let's say name equal to user dot name and then we'll check if it is there else we'll set it to empty. If it's not there, we will set it to empty, right? Instead of all this if else conditions, everything can be replaced in one line by just adding the conditional variables, right? So this is a condition where you're, you're saying if the value is available, use it else use a default empty right very useful when you're trying to set default values right so this is extremely useful um, i'm sure you can use it in your applications very often because such criteria and conditions are pretty common in most applications so whenever you want to set some default values make sure that you use this set the value if it's available or else set it to uh, whatever the default value is all right, so the next one is pretty cool again, uh, which is converting a number to a string. Now, I've seen that so many times uh, people would do something like this. Uh, value equal to 10. Now, something, let's say you want to convert a number to a string, right? So the simplest thing you can do is add, right, so quotes. Now, when you do something like type of num value you would see it's a string see here it's a string right so now if you don't do this let's see what happens now it's a number right so based on that if you just add string it becomes a string now very useful because certain times you're processing appending concatenating values and converting it to a string so very useful so give it a try converting number to a string all right so the next one is backwards which is converting a string to number many a times when you're working with mongodb or any other database which returns you a value most likely the number will be treated as a string i have seen that so let's say age equal to 20. some value we you get it like this or say salary right so you want to convert this into a string and how can you do that so you can simply say salary equal to plus 20 right so what happens is uh, you are just converting that into a number now now let's see that first uh, let me print the value there won't be any change in value so then you would say type of salary now let's refresh here okay assignment to constant variable my bad I'm sorry okay all right so now it says it's a number whereas if you don't do this step it would say the type is string yes so if you want to convert any but a lot of people think that when we add plus it will increment it sometimes this is also asked in JavaScript interview questions that what what is the output of this so some people say it will be 21. Some people say it's 19 because it's incrementing. It's not incrementing. You're just converting the type from number from string to number. Previously, we saw by adding quotes, the number becomes string. And here we are converting string to number. All right. I hope you like it. Uh, if you do hit that like button. I'm bringing one more part of this, which is part two, where I'll show some more tricks to improve your day-to-day um, -day, uh, logical things. You can easily squeeze in a lot of your logic by using such quick tricks. Uh, this is what uh, will make you a better developer. So practice along. Let me know if you have any doubts. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more such interesting videos. Thank you so much.